Hey guys, Sean Klinger with Vital Max. Uh, we are here with the first American Dakar Rally Racer winner, Ricky Burbeck. So, uh, first of all, congratulations. Um, I mean, you've uh, you've done this, this is your fifth year, and you were really close last year, and uh, you got it done. So, what what was different about this year um, that you know led to a victory? Yeah, uh, this is my fifth year, so um, you know it's been a long time coming a lot of work's been put into it uh the difference between this year and last year obviously new country um new team new managers uh different terrain um you know and i think all the testing and all the riding that i've been doing out here in nevada in the mojave desert mm -hmm. has definitely play, paid off okay um you know the terrain in saudi is more or less the same so for me i felt really comfortable okay. um my bike was set up for Barstow and, and, you know, Pahrump, Vegas area. Uh -huh. And the train out there was literally the same, minus the hoops. So um, my bike worked really well the whole time. I made no adjustments the whole entire time. Yeah. Uh, the bike never touched the ground. Uh, two times in the sand dunes. Literally didn't put a scratch on it. Uh, I, I really think that the training here near my home really was a key point you know no i didn't even know what the desert was going to be like out there uh -huh. um, but after the first stage i was like hey this is just like home nice. i feel comfortable so um i'm very fortunate that all 12 days were similar to uh home yeah to uh to put your your racing history in a very quick uh, nutshell i mean you were when you were a kid it was bmx and then you got into moto and then it was like you know you won the 1000 the 500 and san felipe uh, 250 when you were doing those things was like Dakar in the back of your head or was it just kind of like, I'll just see where this racing thing goes? Uh, no, it was for sure. Um, you know, I'll see where this racing thing goes. Uh, rally's not easy to get into, you know? So, yeah. um, I, I watched it as a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, I watched it, you know, every year I was like, man, that'd be really cool to go for, for sure. There's no American racing. So how, how would we even get there? You know? Right. Um, it wasn't it's not an easy thing to get into and people don't understand that here uh it's not cheap yeah. so uh, i was very fortunate in 2015 to go check it out with hrc uh -huh. and uh they trusted me yeah so i was able to get a contract every year and then eventually like it progressed to like two years and then it progressed to three so uh now we sealed the deal we made it happen and it feels really good so i'm really happy to be part of honda and uh you know to help them get to the victory that we've been fighting for for x amount of years right so just looking forward what does this do uh maybe for you like i think americans and you know motocross supercross fans moto guys uh the car they know about it but it's not like top of mind as far as like huge races but i know the rest of the world it's a big deal like are you going to be in like airports and people are going to recognize you and be like oh my god it's ricky brayback like uh dakar is is the world's biggest race yeah. world's most prestigious race um you know it, it wasn't or hasn't been well known here mm -hmm. but i think now you know a lot of people recognize the race uh for sure i got home and i couldn't even go to breakfast you know i was i was approached by three 70 plus year old men uh just you know doing their their normal weekend you know or every morning breakfast with all mm -hmm. their buddies coffee newspaper and this uh, is in Hesperia? This was in Hesperia, you know, and they were super pumped. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, as far as being in an airport somewhere else, uh, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I, I've been on an airplane with Mark Marquez, uh -huh. and we've gotten off the airplane, and it was wild with that guy. <laughs> so uh, if I could be on that level, that'd be insane. Yeah, that'd but, be um, super cool. But, yeah, uh, I think Dakar is growing here in America. Um, as we were saying, you know, it's not cheap. It's not easy for an American to go. So to really – get there is, is a dream come true and to ride with with all these you know fast people around the world is amazing yeah. so what's next for for you i mean obviously there's a rally series so there's other races the rest of the year um so is the plan like do you have a, a new contract or anything planned for the future of, of honda racing and and you know rally yeah um there there's definitely a world championship um you know the goal was Dakar. Uh, we accomplished Dakar. So right, um, right now, uh, contracts in the works for sure. Um, I want to stay racing rally. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I might do 
three rallies plus Dakar again, you know, we want to try to back it up. Yep. Uh, it would be really cool to add add some trophies to the family, you know, like yep. the one I have. But, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of racing left to be done. You know, I'm mm -hmm. 28, so uh, I have a lot of life, you know, ahead of me, and, and I want to accomplish more things. Uh, racing will always be in my blood, um, you know, but I'm young, and I kind of want to accomplish, you know, more than just racing. You know, mm -hmm. obviously we have Baja, we have the National Air and Hound, we have Best in Desert. Now we have uh, – Dakar I mean it wouldn't be bad to go back and get another Dakar win or a podium um, so we're, we're gonna keep it you know as priority but also try to work on some other avenues to accomplish more things um and then I mean it was a bummer to hear about Paolo and you know uh, as a, a former teammate um, does that did that mess with anyone's program as far as like you, I mean there's nothing you can do there's nothing anyone could have done it it's a part of racing but you know was the rest of the race harder or is it like you think about that later uh yeah unfortunately uh as you're saying you know racing's dangerous uh, we think about this every time we put our helmet on our boots on um yeah unfortunately a bad crash you know he passed away um and as you're saying nothing nothing can fix it or or bring our friend back right. but um it, it was tough on the bivouac. It was tough until, you know, the end of the rally. But, um, you know, Paulo is a racer. Um, he would have wanted us to keep going. And, uh, you know, obviously he was a former Honda rider. Tried yep. tried getting this goal, you know, for many years. So uh, for us to finally seal the deal, um, you know, I know he's looking down and he's proud. But, uh, you know, the show goes on. Mm -hmm. um, nothing's going to bring him back. We just have to remember him and uh, – and ride with him you know yeah uh we he would have done the same thing so absolutely it's you know it's racing and what we do is definitely uh not the safest <laughs> right well again congratulations and uh you know we hope uh to see you back there next year and you know winning another uh dakar rally yeah thank you thanks